decking. Uh, there is a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. So that's the thing about the decking. You can go in and hack things. That's one thing I liked about it a lot. So you can get into different secrets and things like that. But we're not doing that kind of playthrough. I wish we were. But uh, that's alright. Let's open this. Uh, if you click Alt, it shows you things that are uh, visible to interact nearby, which that doesn't have any. I'm not be using it a whole lot just because you can actually easily like, I mean, like, boom, that's everything there. Which, I mean, if you want a constant thing popping up, that's fine, but I don't need it. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. Alright. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. Right. Chicago. A framed painting of the Chicago skyline, done in stylized silhouette. <coughs> Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Open the first page. Sure. There is a receipt stuck between the pages in a diary entry. Read the diary entry. I came back from my shift to find four of Peiko's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Peiko, but this cutter drag keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make at the Se seamstress's union, but he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out of the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled a dreck like that again, that he would be sleeping in the alley. Of course he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, but I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got through all of that, all that stuff last year. Got my bartending license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me more than his involvement with the Cutters. I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes along with it. Inspect the receipt. <clears throat> a receipt for a Browning Max Power Pistol from Jin Park downstairs with a note saying how big guns on hot girls turn her on. Alright. Flip a different page. Second. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Peiko reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Peiko. <laughs> Ever since last night, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. I don't know if it's really going to help. Uh, it's really going to help for us to avoid the subject in conversation completely. But I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. The last two nights, I have come home from work to Peiko waiting up for me, slouching on the old dumpster couch with a novel four inches from his face. I imagine that as I turn the key in the door, he perks up and makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. Oh. Let's just say that Peiko should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. So he's not that great with it. Alright, third. There's a receipt and an old photograph stuck between the pages. The picture. The picture shows a young girl with, with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet sh she is smiling. The back of the photo photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Okay, so pet? Uh, inspect the receipt. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Muri's Meat Emporium, located near the Pike Pike Place Market. I think that's illegal. You know? <laughs> um, a receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door set to a combination of 342436. Alright. 
Ah, let's put the fire. The uh, diary down. Let's go to safe first. Broken mirror uh, was hiding a small safe. Put the code. The safe beeps cheerfully in response, and the door comes open. What do we get? Oh, right. Oh God. Uh, Fichetti's basic frag grenade. What would you like to do with this item? Let's send it to our stash. I mean, we don't need it because we're not using grenades. But yeah, let's send it to our stash. Now for Pooter. So yeah, if you had a decking of three, you can uh, you can crack it. But it's all right. Coyote's computer is ancient. Probably uh, fished it out of a junkyard. It doesn't even have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust-caked fans to spin up, only to display on screen. Password? Without the password, the only other button on screen is a password recovery option. Let's do that. Please answer three security questions to reset password. Question one, your first childhood pet. Ah, so, so, by doing some investigation in the room, you could answer these and get into it. Shadow. Answer, uh, stored. Question two, your favorite musical act. Did I read that? <clears throat> Damn. Let's leave the computer and see if I can find any more clues about this. I was reading, so I probably wasn't paying attention too well. Um, so the picture of what was of Shadow, her snake pet. Huh. Is there a hint here? I don't know. I've played this bef bit before, but I don't remember what the uh, thing is. Yeah, Shadow. Favorite musical act. Ah, uh, the Elementals? What's the name of your hometown? Chicago. Answer stored. Okay, incorrect. Starfire? Okay, your password has been reset to for security. Never write down your password. Logging you in. All right. Oh, gained three karma, so we got five. All right. The computer has a basic list of applications. Let's do the calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market to do in 30 minutes. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing that we have to uh, meet Mr. Paco here. <laughs> And uh, go from there. Contacts. Coyote's contact list has exactly one entry. Someone named Paco. There is no comlink number or other contact information for him available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. No, it doesn't. History. A quick scan of her recent recent searches shows that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in Vin action figures about hellhounds are they a legit thing like is hell actually part of it like you know abysses and things like that I don't know let's leave the computer okay speak to mrs. Kubot uh, Kubota anything else nope all right I guess I will just do the whole thing if I want a quick tab like a quick you know view but uh, uh, I don't think I'm gonna use it too much Alright. 
How can I help you? Do you know Peko? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He is a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Uh, yeah, have you heard of uh, Mori's Meat Emporium? Getting zebra meat. Five pounds of it, that was a lot. Uh, no, I'm a vegetarian. Okay, no, I'm sure. Okay. Do you know Jin Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take trash out to the dumpster. Alright. Uh, Coyote has a date with Peiko at Pike Place Park uh, Market in the next half hour. If you could go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Uh, Kimbati Kudase. Good luck. Alright. Alright, so I guess we have to find, uh, take the cab to Pike Place and find and question Coyote. Alright. Well, we've got some karma to spend. So, if there's any alteration, it turns green. So, since we have the, uh, hat, it gives us intelligence plus one, so we have five. So I'm wondering, does that affect... Does it increase our intelligence to five? No, it does not. Ah, so it makes our abilities better, but you still have to, you know, skill up to get the skills. That's a smart way to do it. I was che <laughs> I wasn't cheating the system, I was just trying to play the system, you know. So with this, drone dodge one, plus one dodge. To me, or the drone? So I think it adds combat bonuses. I think it's actually to me that does that. Alright, uh, so we got five. We can get a three charisma. I don't know what to put two in. Dodge, maybe? Reduces the chance to be hit by physical attacks in case somebody gets up in our face about stuff Or just the ranged combat in general So it gives us a higher uh, percentage of actually doing stuff additional weapon slots as well and overwatch Yeah, let's do that So that we could get closer to our quote-unquote good sniping skills that we don't have. Um, so we're at 925. Alright. What could go wrong? On well, a place like this, anything could go wrong at any time. So, you know. Take a cab to Pike Place Market? Sure. Pike Place Market. You catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market. In a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops. All living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s, overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. Alright, so I'm... Straight up curiosity, are these places, like people who live in Seattle, if you do watch this, or watching, or anybody who's been to Seattle watching this, is there an actual public market center, or or a Pike Place Market, I mean? Obviously there's always a public market center, but uh, are these real places, or are they just imaginary and they just stuck them into Seattle? Because this is, you know, futuristic, you know, you could do whatever the hell you want once the city is destroyed kind of thing. 
I don't know. We'll see. Find Coyote's boyfriend, Peiko. Patrick! Is he an Irish elf? Nah. Hmm. Oh, the Universal Brotherhood. Build a better tomorrow. Alright. Well, he's the only one we can actually talk and interact with, so let's talk to him. Join us and change the world. Yeah, I'm good. Patrick, the handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely undivided attention. Sir, you are a beautiful dwarf, but you could be so much more. Sounds great. Tell me more. <laughs> Wonderful. The Universal Brotherhood is a family <coughs> encompassing all metahuman sexes and sexualities. We all strive to be the very best we can to live more fulfilled, happy, and productive lives and to support each other in doing so. The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian, uh, Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. So, okay. So I guess, I guess her thing is the family of the sixth world, like the idea of it. So she's like doing <clears throat> uh, sermons, I guess you could say, about things like that. Uh, please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to him. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. Oh yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think in game you can even, you know, go in there anyway. Refurbished flowers for sale. Refurbished flowers. Fresh fruit. Synth juice for sale. Just fabbed today. Oh, well, there's Mr. Peiko. Uh, let's... Let's actually look around a little bit more. Tail. Tail and ale. Oh. Okay. I got dog on a stick here. Dog on a stick, huh? Sounds like a fallout food. Well, Maury's Meat Emporium. Can't I talk to you about stuff? Are you not Maury? I'm gonna quick save here. See, I, I still wonder what that is. Oh god. Officer Landers. So I forgot how much uh actual, you know, cop dealing stuff you're doing, so changing the security thing I completely like probably from habit, but I didn't mean to meta it like that. Optional, learn more about the Pike Place murder. Sure, actually. Officer Lander. Landers. A tall, emotional Lone Star officer blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of the organ grinder's coroner, Dresden. Oh, okay. This is an active Lone, off lone Star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. Here to see Coroner Dresden. Yes. Oh, I just happened to see him. Sure, let's do that. <clears throat> Detective Travoke, uh, Auburn Precinct. Cool. We have reason to believe the victim may have been involved in an illegal BTL smuggling ring we're investigating. I'd like to examine her belongings for evidence. Badge and sin, please. Well, it's all right, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. The officer looks at you with poorly concealed skepticism. Okay, then. Make it quick. So, uh, he saved our ass. Probably from being, you know, thrown in jail or worse. <coughs> So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of the dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I take it I've stumbled across another Ripper murderer? Uh, yes, I'm on the trail of the dead man's killer. In a way. A little sidetracked. But yeah, it's, it's coincidence at the same, nonetheless. Yeah, that's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Scratches his head, absentmindedly, probably breaking some sort of 
sanitation protocol. Yeah, probably. In a time like this, you gotta wash your hands all the time. Don't touch your face. No. Uh, she's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the Stuffer Shack just around the corner. Looks like she just... She was just leaving work when it happened. All this stuff happens at night when people are leaving for work. It's very unfortunate. Uh, can you tell if she was subdued in some way before her eyes were removed? That's a strange thing. Uh, there don't seem to be any s signs of a struggle. Not a single bruise on her body. Yet, she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out, I don't know until I can run some tests back at the lab. <clears throat> so she was still knocked out. Probably through the uh, magic and drugs, maybe? I, I don't know. That's kind of what his assumption was at the beginning. Um, I thought you ran the Redmond franchise. Isn't Pike Place a little far from home? Yeah, well, I don't really mind the change of scenery. The coroner for the downtown branch is out on mater maternity. So I told management that I'd cover for her on this run. Uh, plus, I want the sicko cot. Yeah, don't, don't blame you, dude. Any sign of magic use here? There were evidence of an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now, there's an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey uh, shows up, he'll call in a full magical for forensic team, though, just to be sure. So, the Ripper takes Sam Watts' liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose? Probably of some symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't uh, speculate. Who's that ugly dude there? Uh, that's enough questions. Thanks, Tristan. Hey, I figure if I could, if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murderers. Oh, murderers, good luck out there, eh? Speaking of McCluskey, uh, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Sure. Officer Aguri? Hey, he looks like a, you know, Italian dude. Or like the, you know, classic, uh, what's the word? I don't know. He just looks like your typical cop. <clears throat> so you're the one who's working for the dead man, eh? McCluskey, uh, warned us you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer uh, Aguri, or uh, Agu Agir? I don't know. Pleased to meet you. Now seeing as this crime scene is going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? What can you tell me about the murder that took place here? Not much, really. We know it was about three hours ago, and we know that her eyes have been surgically removed. Didn't need a Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me, I've been scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses, but no luck so far. Damn Ripper might as well be a ghost. Take it you and McCluskey don't exactly see eye to eye. Let's just say McCluskey and I have conflicting interests. Do you have any leads on the Ripper that I should know about? Ha, plenty, if you ask McCluskey. But the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Thanks for your time. Uh, hey, hold on a minute there. You haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah, see, you make a contribution to the fund. I put you on a list and let you know the next time we find any orphans that you might be interested in. Well, I'm always interested in finding out about any new orphans you discover. So I guess I put in some money to this orphans fund and uh, whenever something comes up in something like this, he's going to ring me. And uh, I'll be getting stuff. Sure, I'll do that. Excellent. Shall we say 300 Nurin? All right, you got a deal. Uh, give off, give the officer the Nurin and your comlink code. All right. His face splits into a wide grin. Excellent. I'll start an account for you. We get any useful new leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. See, he's going to make things faster too. So I'm not wandering aimlessly and just stumbling across a dead body like this. Now I'd better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Sure. An elf. 
damn elf. I mean, okay. He's some creepy, like, Nosferatu motherfucker. So, I'm... in lab coat? Hmm. Are you the Ripper? Uh, the elf standing before you might, uh... You may quite possibly be... Oh, before you may be quite possibly the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, for, uh, format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire, do you know which organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Who's asking? The elf giggles, a strange high-pitched warble you <laughs> would not expect to emerge from his misshapen face. Oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. A good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. You're, you're the... If you're not the Ripper, you're definitely a, uh... Lying on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged clear, clear, cleanly out, and you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. Need something else? Any fascinating new leads? What about the bite marks on her arm? Ah, completely unrelevant. It appears some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley sometime after her death. Oh, that's unfortunate. You notice a particularly ugly elf standing over there in the crowd earlier? Oh, can I trust the sergeant? Yeah, that sounds about right. Any opportunity to get in McCluskey's way, he'll take it. A bit sleazy, sure, but I'd take him over McCluskey any day of the week. Same. Have you noticed the uh, ugly elf? Huh? Where? Dresden scans the spectators surrounding the crime scene. He's gone now, but he was asking about the body, wondering which organ grinder's facility it will be taken to. Interesting. Well, there's those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure, but that's pretty poor form to inquire at the site of a murder. Any ugly... an ugly elf, eh? Uh, I'll keep an eye out. Shouldn't be hard to spot if he comes back around. Enough questioning. Thanks, Tristan. Anytime. Yeah, he's definitely in the suspicious category of my, uh, you know, contact list. He's the person in your contact list where it's like, ignore in any way you can. Has seen my friend around tall uh, lady dreads. All right, well, this is Peiko, and I think I'm going to leave it here. Uh, this episode, we found out more about the Seamstresses Union, uh, what what it's all about. It seems like the uh, you know where the uh, you know I don't know the low lives and everybody else goes to. Um, to get their fix on whatever they want. And uh, we talked to uh, a couple people about Coyote. Uh, figured out that she's missing, and it's been about two days since anybody has known anything about her. And uh, meeting up with this Peiko, who's uh, Coyote's boyfriend. Uh, he's, he's a ganger in the Cutters gang. Um, and... Yeah, uh, we just obviously saw the uh, a new crime scene of a woman who had her eyes taken out. So, so far, and we got a uh, karma point for doing that stuff. But, um, so we found out that uh, there's a heart taken out, the liver, a liver, uh, a spleen, and now the eyes. So it kind of looks like this Ripper is, I mean, finding specific uh, organs, yes, but also ones that, well, I don't know, it's just strange. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
I'm enjoying this series so far. Uh, it's nice getting back into it and uh, learning about it and stuff, and also just the just the atmosphere of it is is it's really good. I highly recommend it. But uh, yeah, I'll leave links in the description of my social medias and my Patreon, and I'll see you next time. Be safe. Bye bye.